if you're doing all the herbs and, and vitamins and minerals or drugs or surgeries or whatever in the hell else you're doing at the physical model and you're not taking care of the back pain, chronic back problems, most Lyme problems, most, you know, uh, energy issues, cancer, mm -hmm. all, all those sort of things and not able to get anywhere, then you may okay. want to look at the energetic. The energetics, your tools could be neural therapy, acupuncture, reprogramming this nervous system, um, laser therapy, P EMF, putting energies into it, mitochondria re rehabilitation, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Reiki would be part of that because Reiki is an energetic kind of thing that moves. That. I see myself as somebody that understands the neuroimmune system and, and, and fashions its dentistry around them. So let me give you a little history. Yeah. Uh, probably a good place to start. Yes. Uh, graduated in dentistry in 73. Uh, internship, very traditional, VA in 74. Uh, started practice. 79 is when I started to understand that there was a lot more than just my traditional training. Um, actually, in when I was in dental school, I looked towards possibly going to medical school. So I really thrived on the medical side of it. And, um, and in 79, I, I became interested in the TMJ, craniomandibular therapy stuff. And then I got involved with more people that were holistic at that point. And uh, so I added nutrition, I added craniosacral therapy, I added homeopathy, I added acupuncture. But um, so I, I had an ap attitude and an aptitude towards, towards the holistic part of that. So then when the holistic thing presented itself in 79 that I could incorporate it into my practice, I kind of jumped in with both feet. So well, I think it's fantastic that you started, you started this practice like way back in, in the late 70s. You were into yeah. a lot of these methods. Yeah, well, did, did you feel like you were the only one doing it back then? Well, you were pretty close to being, you know, and there weren't, there okay. weren't, around. <laughs> well, it may I have mean, been. you know, that was very early into mercury free and other things. And in fact, that's where I personally became mercury free. Um, then in the, uh, so in the 90s, 95, uh, the kind of practice that I was working with uh, really lend itself to blending it with a medical practice. And uh, a good friend of mine um, came to me and said, listen, let's start an integrative medical practice. And that way, then we can really bring some of these things out a little bit better. It made a lot of sense to me. So in 95, I started um, the National Integrated Health Associates. My current practice, which is an integrative medical dental practice, but we have naturopaths, we have lots of other people, psychoemotional people and whatever. And there's about 40 plus people that, that are employed by, by NIA, not NIA, NIHA. The, first, I guess, let's define integrative medicine because that's a, probably a good place to start and we can add from there. Yes. Uh, but integrative medicine looks at spirit, mind, body and is able to, to treat in each one of the elements and basically what i'm just going to be describing to you is an ancient yoga model 5,000, 10,000 year old model that says you're not a spirit mind body but there's a you're a spirit intuitive mind energetic physical body each one of those layers has a um has a assessment tool that can figure out is there a problem in that layer that model looks at the physical and the, which is the biochemical and physical at, at the bottom layer. That I means that's, 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 we can see that, we can feel that, we can measure that, we can image that, we can, biochemistry can kind of see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. And of course we have pathology and functional problems in that, in that physical world of ours. Then above that, you have the energetic. The energetic regulates the physical. And so you got this energetic system, which is the autonomic nervous system, your reptilian brain, your psycho neuroimmunological and probably 
and 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 humoral or or uh, um, um, endocrine system. So, and that pretty much regulates the cells, the matrix, the you know the tissues, the structures, and everything else, hmm. without you having to think about it. So there's feedback tools there that you know that you can use to test. Those feedback tools can be muscle testing. They can be EAV testing, uh, electro uh, uh, meridian stress testing. They can be thermography. They can be anything that stresses the nervous system and gets information back from it. Could be EKG, EEGs, those kind of things. Heart rate variability. A lot of things in that realm that basically gives you energetic information that you couldn't see, you can't feel. What you're doing in the physical is you're doing palpation. You're doing clinical evaluation. You're doing biochemical testing. You're doing physical uh, imaging. Those are the tools there. And of course, pathological medicine operates on that physical level. Right. However, yes. the energetic level often gets affected. And the way this model works is that if you try to do the best you can in the physical model and you're not in the physical you know, level and you're not able to get anywhere and that you know you can probably include most chronic back problems most Lyme problems most you know uh energy issues cancer all all those sort of things and not able to get anywhere then maybe the problem is higher up the problems in the energetic now remember the energetic regulates the physical the physical can't treat the energetic two different things mm -hmm. physics and in biochemistry you can't measure something in physics with biochemical tools. I guess that's why uh, the big thing is with a lot of Western medicine, oftentimes you're treating the symptom, but not the cause. With the energetics, you can actually get the cause. You can figure out what the issue is, um, hold that at bay, and then in turn, take care of the symptoms. Again, bringing integrative medicine in here, what you're really looking at is the root causes. And we'll get to those root causes in a second once we get through the, you know, a little bit of the model. Above that is your mind. That's your thoughts, attitudes, and beliefs. Psychology is the, is the mainstay in that. And we do have tools to be able to see what the unresolved psychoemotional issues are, what your belief systems are. Because if your belief systems are is that I'm a cripple, guess what? You're a cripple. Right. You know, and or I mean, that's kind of a. Um, you know, that's, you know, but anyway, that's kind of how that works. Right. I get and your point. Then, I understand what you're trying to say. Then above that is this fuzzy layer where we're working off our intuition. Jung called it the dream body. The ancients called it the fourth. It's your world of channeling. It's your world of deep meditation. It's your world of transcendence. Above that is, is your soul. That's you and God. Nobody gets in the middle of that. On the fourth level, what we find in the treatment world is that you may have a family systems issue that you have inherited, almost like a genetic kind of thing. In fact, very much like that. Egregious transgressions, many times those are played out with subsequent generations. Most chronic problems, cancer, organ diseases, whatever, which you can't get rid of, there'll be an unresolved psychoemotional issue. We all have them. God knows we, none of us have, have, are immune for this. Right. And there's, there's practices that that's all they do. They go back to that. Now, if I have a feedback tool, I, I mean, one of the things we do, if I have a feedback tool, I can figure out what stresses you. I can put, lock you into a certain file, you know, let's say with your liver, and then I can figure out what's happening, what's the emotion and what's the timing and all of that sort of thing and go what back. What would be some examples of a, a feedback tool? Muscle I mean, testing. Like, like biofeedback or muscle um, testing? I can do oh, muscle do testing, it. absolutely. Muscle okay. Testing. You can probably do it with heart rate variability, although it's a little bit more cumbersome. Okay. I'm much more familiar with muscle testing. I'm just kind of giving you some ideas on how this body of ours works. So as um, for your practice, as a biological dentist, 
what do you do that's so very different from a, a more conventional dentist? I mean, I understand you um, remove amalgam fillings and that's very important. Um, what are some of the other things that distinguish you from others? Sure. That's, thank you for answering, asking that question because I started there and I didn't get go further. Okay. The way I look at it is that in my practice, I mean, you can say biological dentist, you can say holistic dentist, you can say integrative medical dentist, whatever. They're sort of all the same, kind of like functional medicine and holistic medicine, integrative medicine, same, same kind of thing. Okay. Um, I see myself as somebody that understands the neuroimmune system and, and, and fashions its dentistry around that. Mercury is one of those I talked about because it poisons the autonomic nervous system probably more severely than anything else. Maybe lead a little bit more, but probably not. Mercury is so, and it's so pervasive. You don't even have to have mercury fillings in your mouth. It's in the environment. And, you know, and you, so you're deal, your body's dealing with that. Um, getting mercury out safely is the bread and butter. What the meridian system is, is a way that your body shares electrons with the various components. The teeth have a certain, I mean, they're, they're like the antennas. They're the hardest thing, hardest biological thing we know, and they have some kind of anchoring in the antennas. And each one of those teeth have a certain relationship with certain, certain body uh, uh, meridians. Okay. Anterior teeth, urogenital, you know, cuspids, liver, and so, so forth and so on. So what the dead teeth do is it's eliminate, it steals that energy. So we can yeah. talk about this as a toxic foci. So when, when toxic, people say that um, teeth are connected to different parts of the body, it, the teeth actually affect different energetics or different meridians. And those meridians are also tied to other parts of the body. Hence, one tooth may affect another part of the body. Correct. So, okay. Exactly correct. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Gotcha. Yeah. We see that all the time in cancer. I mean, mm -hmm. look for the tooth that's connected to that, and it's often a root canal. Cavitations are always connected with, or often connected with cancer. That's the dental connection. And that's well known in German, German science and, you know, in, in, in what goes on in Mexico and what goes on here too. Now we do other things too in biological dentistry. We use a lot of ozone in everything we do. Um, you know, we, we, we use uh, nutrients a lot. Uh, when you get a tooth taken out, it's a certain way we do that. And to, to prevent, you know, cavitations and other kind of things that are going on. Uh, do a lot of, you know, every part of dentistry, there's a holistic way of dealing with that, that, you know, tries to be drug, drug free, you know, doesn't nice. mean we're not herb free, but we're drug free. So, That's fantastic. That's a biological dentist. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually do have some amalgam fillings still in. And I, I'm, I'm just kind of curious. So I have heard that if they're not cracked or, you know, if they're solid, that it's probably best to leave them in there. But when the time comes that they need to come out, you need to make sure that they're, you know, they are removed um, properly because that's when a lot of the mercury poisoning takes place. Is that at all correct? Or is well, it just a good idea to have them removed, period? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would do the latter. I would I would argue very strongly to the latter. Let me give you an example. You can pro I can probably demonstrate to you in any tissue that you have a you have mercury in your in your tissue. That's a bad thing. That's this, you know uranium is worse, but mercury is is will will destroy every enzyme in your system, hmm. or none. So. In order to get your body in a little better shape, you should be taking this stuff out, not right. putting it in. With every chew, breath, and swallow, you're putting more in. Right. Let's say I found out that you had a lead problem, but you were wearing lead boots. The first rule of detox is what? Get rid of the source. Right. I say, Lauren, take your boots off. You cannot detox lead, any divalent heavy metal, effectively or efficiently until you get rid of the sources. 
because they all come out the same way. Lead is a divalent, mercury is divalent, arsenic is divalent, cadmium is divalent, tin is divalent. They're all coming out the same way. The only one that isn't is aluminum. So your detoxification system is basically designed to get that stuff out. Why is it used and why is it continued to be used? I know it's phasing out a little bit or maybe even a lot, but I know the last probably five years ago, I talked to my dentist about it and he was like, oh, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it at all. And, you know, I, I haven't seen him since, not that one, because <laughs> I, I personally disagree. Um, I, I think there is. I think you no. may know a little bit more than he does, unfortunately. You know, we're all a, an exam, we're all a, a, um, a, a uh, product of what our belief systems have been, have evolved. And when you're told by people that your teachers in dental school and your journals that everything is fine and, and everybody else over there are crazy, right. they don't know their dentist and they're not scientists. We're the only scientists. Well, the, the, the truth of the matter is that there is thousands and thousands of scientific articles that say it's a problem. You asked your question, when did it start? It started in the uh, oh, 1840s or so. Uh, the French amalgamated mercury and other things, and they were able to pack it into teeth. Uh, it was a whole lot easier to do that than, than, um, uh, than make gold and other kind of things that, were, that dentists were doing at the time. Uh, they were called quacks after Quicksilver. They were the quacks. The ADA was a couple years later became the the um, the dental association for the quacks, and they okay. had the patent for that. And of course, you don't go against the traditional, or else, especially when they are responsible for your education and certifying you. Right. So therefore, then you you pick up the, the party line. And, you know, and we're, we're into a lot of social shaming right now. So if you were a dentist that said mercury was a problem in the 70s and 80s, which I lived through, 90s even, you know, there was a lot of social shaming right. as well as fluoride. Fluoride was in there too. Fluoride was never proven safe and it's, and it's proven pretty, pretty pathetically bad, really. It ossifies the the pineal gland and other things. And in fact, Hitler used to use it very well, very nicely for his, for all the people that uh, he, he put in concentration camps, it just kind of mollified him. It was a great, it was a great thing for them. I do believe in fluoride. I'm a farmer, as you know, and I feed the rats and rodents on my farm fluoride tablets. <laughs> Gosh. It does. It makes them. It gives them a happy death. But you know, I. I mean, I'm not a flora anti fluoridationist. I. I do these some sort of things. So, you know. Gosh. Well, that's funny. So anyway, that's that's the answer. <laughs>